Um, so for those of you who don't know us, if you are watching us live or later um, on Facebook or on the YouTube page, because it will go onto YouTube later on as well, this is the Greenway Churches um, service for Sunday the 24th of January with a lot of snow. And uh, I'm Susan, the vicar, and today we have uh, the team from St Mary's uh, Whitcomb with Bentham leading worship and um, others of us in Zoom just because it's nice to be in the Zoom room uh, and people watching online as well. So hello Lisa and hello Rebecca. Um, lots of people enjoying being together and not having to go out in the snow. It's got to be the first time I think that we've all gone, oh it's snowed and it doesn't matter because we don't have to go anywhere, or well, most of us don't have to go anywhere. If you've got to go somewhere, please stay safe. So we are recording this um, and the other churches, morning Sally, morning Kevin, the other churches in our group, it's uh, Badgeworth and Sherdington and Wickham with Bentham. And this morning it's Wickham with Bentham leading our worship. Um, and we've only got a minute to go, so I'll hand over to Sue in case there's anything she would like to say and I'll mute myself. No, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's lovely to have you all with us. As I look out of my window, the snow is going quite quickly, so I hope there's still some left for when you want to get out there um, after the service. Um, so welcome to this service um, led by the team from St Mary's Wickham with Bentham. I'm Sue, one of the worship leaders, and I have with me to take part in the service, the Reverend Susan, whom you know well, who is going to preach for us this morning, Robin, and Bill, who are going to read for us, Christine, who is leading our intercessions, and Rachel, along with Julian and Rob, Matt, perhaps, I'm not sure who is going to lead our singing for us. So thank you very much to all of those. We are using, as usual, the reflective um, worship service, um, which you may have printed or which you can find on a church near you. So I'm just going to light my candle and I think it's time to begin. And so we meet today on this third Sunday of Epiphany when we continue to give praise and thanks for the revelation of Christ to all nations and hence to us. We shall hear today about the beginning of his revelation on his, during his earthly ministry as he began to reveal his miraculous powers. And so we come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. We keep a moment of silence to still our hearts. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God now together. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, <clears throat> fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive us by the death of the Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. So we have our first reading. The New Testament reading is from the Revelation of St. John the Divine, chapter 19, verses 6 to 10. <clears throat> 
Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your comrades who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Here ends the reading. And now the Gospel reading. The reading is from chapter, of John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. <clears throat> On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana, on in Galilee, Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water, water that had been turned to wine. He did not realize where it had come from. So the servants who had drawn the water knew then he called the bridegroom aside <clears throat> and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Susan. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you enjoy treasure hunts? <laughs> Some of the people on Zoom are nodding, which is very helpful or putting their thumbs up. I do. It's nice to stretch our minds, to think about the clues, to use our imaginations. And nowadays they even have escape rooms. I don't know if anyone's joined in one of those. Games where you have to piece together the clues to solve the puzzle. And you can do them online as well as in real life. In our gospel reading today, we hear about the first of Jesus' signs or clues that tell us who he is turning water into wine. By the way, a lot of water into a lot of wine. John sets out his gospel differently to the other three gospels. There are clues or signs throughout, leading us to use our own imaginations. 
but that is not to say that there is anything imaginary about the signs or miracles. The theologian Tom Wright is keen to point out that the signs or miracles are moments when heaven and earth intersect with each other. Moments when heaven and earth intersect with each other. I think that's a beautiful description. This sits really neatly alongside the text that we all know from John's Gospel. The word became flesh. Jesus was fully human and fully divine. The word made flesh. Throughout this Gospel, we have the clues that prove this. Let's put our Gospel reading into context. It comes straight after the story of Nathaniel and the fig tree that we heard last week, where Philip rushes to tell Nathaniel that they have found the one Moses wrote about, and he's really excited. Nathaniel is less excited and a little sceptical, and he only believes this because Jesus told him that he saw him under the fig tree. So you might remember that story. He couldn't actually see him, but when he met him, he told him a little bit about who Nathaniel was, and Nathaniel was impressed. And in the, in the gospel, it says that he believed. And the story there is a clue in John's treasure hunt. Because in Tom Wright's translation, Jesus says to Nathaniel, are you telling me that you believe just because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You'll see a lot more than that. The lot more that Jesus talks about is a series of clues, clues or signs revealing Jesus as the son of God, the king of Israel. And this is the first of a lot more signs. So clues, signs and miracles, they all have something in common. The ordinary, like running out of wine at a wedding, which was, by the way, an absolute disgrace at that time. And the heavenly, the intervention of the divine in Jesus, turning water into wine. Miracles happened in normal, basic human situations. At weddings, in the temple, walking along a road, in the city. Heaven and earth intersecting. The whole point of Jesus' birth, God coming down to live with us in our gritty, grimy, sometimes gruesome world. Here we are in Epiphany, where all the signs and miracles and clues tell us that God is with us. Emmanuel means God with us here on earth. Jesus is our Emmanuel. Performing miracles in the mundane, giving us glimpses of heaven and earth intersecting. Indeed, transforming things. Water into wine, disease into health, anxiety into calm. But it's not just the Gospels that are full of moments when heaven and earth intersect with each other. Our world is full of them. Signs and miracles telling us who Jesus is. At the moment, it's easy to be overwhelmed by the amount of suffering in the world, not least because of Covid. When there's a lot of suffering evident, there are two things we need to remember. The first is that God is with us always, to the end of the age, until we are invited to that great wedding banquet referred to in the Revelation reading. The second is that we need to keep looking for clues and signs like a treasure hunt, miracles in the mundane, where heaven and earth intersect. It is human to feel overwhelmed. The lockdown is harder than others. This one is harder than others for many of us. January is often a tricky time for our mental health and our spiritual health. Adding in a pandemic and a lockdown is bound to have an adverse effect. So I recommend that you take a little time each day, perhaps during your prayer time, to be thankful, to notice the good things that God is doing every day. In our house, we started calling them blue sky moments. We might be noticing the food on our plates. 
the blue skies, the sunshine, the showers, the snow, the vaccine, friends sending gifts or calling, and so many more. You'll know what your blue sky moments are. I don't mean that we should be overly optimistic or ignore the troubles of the world. Times are tough and we should acknowledge that. Lament is part of our faith and our tradition. You only have to read the Psalms to see plenty of lament. But sometimes we overlook the good, the miracles in the mundane, those clues in the treasure hunt, the moments when heaven and earth intersect with each other. We might not see water turned into wine, but God is always with us. The signs, the clues are everywhere and we need to actively look for them and be thankful. Amen. Thank you, Susan, very much for those words. And now we'll have our first hymn, that great epiphany hymn, brightest and best of the sons of the morning. Um, if you can follow it <coughs> in the orange hymn book, <coughs> sorry, it's number 85, and it's also on the A Church Near You website on the weekly sheet. So thank you, Rachel. Brightest and best of the sons of the morning, dawn on our darkness and lend us thine aid. Star of the east, the horizons adorning, guide where the infant redeemer is laid. Cold on his cradle, the dewdrops are shining, low lies his head with the beasts of the store. Angels adore him in slumber reclining, maker and monarch and saviour of all. Say shall we kneel him in costly devotion, odours of Edom and offerings divine, gems of the mountain and pearls of the ocean, more from the forest and gold from the Vainly we offer each humble oblation, vainly with gifts would his favour secure. Richer by far is the heart's adoration, dearer to God are the prayers of the And now we affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now Christine will lead us in our intercessions. We intercede for others. Lord, meet us in the stillness and hear our prayer. The response today for in... Lord, in your mercy, the response is, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, in the certain knowledge that you hear us when we come to you in faith, we ask you to receive the prayers we offer today. As we come to the end of the week of prayer for Christian unity, we pray for all Christians who are suffering and are in danger of persecution. Lord, strengthen and comfort your people in their united witness to the world. We pray for the world's church leaders that they may receive a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit and strive to build God's one united church. 
We pray for Archbishop Justin, Bishop Rachel, Bishop Robert, and all our ministers in this benefice. Unite in the truth all who know you as their Lord and Saviour, that we may live together in peace and love and in acceptance of our differences. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all countries that are having to live with war, famine, or the results of natural disasters while still struggling with the frightening effects of COVID. We pray for migrants, refugees, and anyone who's enduring homelessness this winter. We pray for our own country, its government and our queen. Give wisdom to those in authority in every land in this tough time of COVID and give us all a desire to live in unity and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our community and during this time of lockdown, we pray for all key workers who work to give us food in our shops and care in the hospitals. Heavenly Father, we give ourselves to you, our families, our neighbours and our friends. Empower us with your Holy Spirit and unite us to live in love and gentleness with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are feeling betrayed, lonely or deserted. For all who've been misunderstood. For those who have suffered physically, spiritually or mentally. For survivors of violence with memories that disturb or frighten them. We pray for all who have lost confidence in themselves and others. We pray for those in the NHS who've been looking, who've been working so hard to look after us, sometimes putting themselves at risk of infection. Please Lord, refresh them, strengthen them during these COVID times and let them feel your presence as they work to save lives. Let us take a moment to bring before our Heavenly Father anyone we know who is suffering and needs his healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give thanks for the life and witness of all those who have died and gone before us. And we remember especially Harry Cole. We praise you, Lord God, for the witness of your faithful servants in every age and ask that we may share with them Christ the King's resurrection glory. And we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We sum up those prayers in the collect for today. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will pray together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us in whatever words or language you prefer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now if Rachel will lead us again in our second song, which is number 195 in the Orange Prayer Book, uh, hymn book, the one we, th we call the Servant King, echoing what those words that we spoke in the affirmation of our faith. From heaven you came. From heaven you came, helpless babe. Entered our world, your glory veiled, not to be served, but to serve, and give your life that we might live. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily Tears. My heavy load he chose to bear. His heart with sorrow was torn. Yet not my will, but yours, he said. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our love as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. Come see his hands and his feet, the scars that speak of sacrifice, hands that flung stars into space, to cruel nails surrendered. This is our God. King, he calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. So let us learn how to serve, and in our lives enthrone him, each other's need to prefer, for it is Christ we're serving. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. Faithful God, may we who share in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen say the grace together and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>